Hi, this is Dave Gallagher from 3D Appeal Blog, and today we're going to be looking at the Tom rig from Jonathan. So Jonathan asked me to look at this rig and do a makeover. And um, first thing when I look at this rig is the I notice the um, the shader. I want to be careful when using shaders like this because you can't really read the uh, the surface properly. You can't really tell what the surface is doing when it's super shiny like this. Uh, so I maybe pull back on the shader. Um, the next thing is the uh, density of the so of the um, the head. <clears throat> it's too dense, and um, if I'm just going to show what my proposed uh, geometry density would be, this is it. So this is uh, the before and the density, and this is the after. So without changing the shape too much, you can you can lose quite a bit of um, geometry density. And what that's going to do is is uh, speed things along. So it's not going to be as is slow to work with if instead of you you having dozens of rows around the eyes you just have a few so <clears throat> that contributes to a slowness when you grab a control like this and you move it around if you have the smooth uh, version on so I'm gonna hit the three and this is the smooth version of the head in Maya and when I move things around it's just dog slow really slow lightening the geometry would really help so this is a, a rig that has um, is pure uh, joint driven, which isn't a bad style. But would you have um, the mandate I gave myself behind this was a one day facial rig, and so if you're going to do a one day face rig, you have to keep the joint structure underneath very simple. And by the way, that includes no sort of scripts that um, help install things. It's it's from scratch one day. So with that mandate in mind for myself, um, I couldn't use lots of joints. It had to be only a only a base of fewer joints and then blend shapes on top of that. This rig doesn't have blend shapes which uh, could work but doesn't work in this case. If you um, try to make certain shapes they just aren't possible. So if you want to make them um, smile there's something kind of creepy about it because nothing really moves around it so then you have to grab surrounding controls and uh, build the smile yourself which um, I think due to the, the fall off and the, the nature of how the things are arranged, it's very difficult to get clean shapes. For instance, if you want to clean up this coarse uh, smile lip line, it's very difficult. You can sort of crank it and you kind of get there, but by default you get kind of this uh, waviness. And that's not something that uh, you want to fight against in the animation. And so in order to do a rig that's it is pure... Um, uh, joint driven. You've got to be really careful about the weighting and the distribution. And uh, this has some sort of funky weighting where um, it's it's not sort of evenly distributed and it doesn't come down far enough to get um, shapes. So you're going to be limited by um, the weighting that you have. Even up here in into the uh, cheek zone, you lift uh, this cheek, but very quickly you get a sort of a shelf developing. And you have to watch out for errant points, sort of, such as these points here are lifting. Uh, needlessly when you move the cheeks. A lot of that kind of thing is happening in the brows. When you move the brows down, you're getting these parts moving here. You have to be careful of that. And um, in general, when the brows are used, they feel like they're sort of like pulling off instead of um, having the involvement of the area around it. So it feels like it's sort of um, ripping off the, off the head instead of uh, a muscle sort of building up around this area. Uh, as you pull down these other ones, what you get is a leading edge of uh, the flesh underneath the brow instead of the brow itself. So what you'd want to see here instead would be um, the brow and then the, the flesh would just sort of simply um, lead back into just above the eye. That's probably not a good description. It would be the brow and then the flesh going just above the eye, something like that. So having, um, having that leading edge of flesh doesn't help you to be able to pose things. Generally, you want to get a few certain key shapes with the brows. And one of them is a, sort of like an all-brow down shape. And instead of looking like this, you'd want it to look, um, instead, of, instead of developing this uh, weird shape there, you'd want it to just sort of be more simple like this. And again, that problem with uh, pulling on the eyelid uh, points itself is 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 something that you'll fight against 
Uh, if you want to do a sneer or something, you're going to fight against waiting problems there too, because you can't move things very much before the waiting discrepancies start to start to tear the the nose. Uh, the brows and the mustache are attached with the same waiting system uh, as the joints. So this is a problematic approach because if you if you drive the face with anything other than those joints, um, then for instance any blend shape, then it's not going to work. The next thing is the eyes. If you want to animate the eyes, you, you grab this control here and you use these lid controls. So the problem with this is you kind of want it to go flat more or less and it's it's got a um, an odd shape to it and you're sort of crashing in to the um, this area right right there. So you want to you want to really get the simplest shape um, as you can right there and then the lower lid you want it to meet it but instead it's it's um, sort of getting a waviness. So you want to keep that as straight as possible. On the mouth open I'll just grab this jaw control here and open that. What you want is for that corner to to gradually come down and get just a little bit of a corner right there and then come down there. And again the simplest possible shape in terms of just the outline but also just the way that the geometry flows around that is really important and there's a complexity going on to the shapes or a uh, like shearing that happens to the polygons which makes his mouth kind of strange looking when he, when he opens. It's, it's not too appealing when that mouth opens. Next thing is the, um, the teeth. If you look at the teeth uh, with the, the teeth bared a little bit, and you see that they have lots of gaps in between. And this normally isn't a super appealing uh, thing to do is have lots of gaps. So those are the things that you're going to find uh, challenging when working with this rig. And so the, the idea for me was to create a rig in one day and what what could be done in one day well what you have to do is simplify quite a bit and then rely a little bit more on blend shapes and just a simple solid um, joint system underneath now I like to work in soft homage and there's no um, pre-existing rig at all that uh, I work from just merely setting in uh, nulls or uh, locators essentially and uh, using them as joints and building them from scratch. It really doesn't take too long if you do it right. Now the first thing is again the uh, reduction in the geometry which went from this to this. The next thing to look at would be the shader. You want a shader that's a little bit shiny but um, something where you can see all the form. So as you roll around what you want to look at is that highlight. The shape of the highlight is extremely important. It tells you key information about what's happening on the surface. You see just a little bit of highlight here. You see a highlight here. All this is giving you cues uh, to the shaping. The work without them, I think, is working a little bit blind. It would be better if his mouth were closed by default, but it's fine just with it open. That You just want to make sure that um, most of the time you're going to have it posed probably closed. So I didn't change that. I only uh, reduced the geometry. So when you're building a face rig, and especially when you have a limited time to do it in, you want to make sure that the things that you build in are specifically to get the, the range of performance uh, that you need. And so in this case, Jonathan sent uh, an animatic of uh, the animation he's trying to do. And so I looked at it to see what kind of actions um, were needed. So he's got to sit there. He's got to blow his coffee. He's got to um, just look nonchalant. And then... Um, here he spills his coffee and he's got to look um, uh, pained and surprised and then he looks shocked as he realizes he's going to hit something so this is a sort of like a key pose you've got to hit and then uh, he looks uh, tense and then uh, there's a gun play and he looks uh, scared he's looking up and there isn't a whole lot else I included uh, a few other things but uh, these are the main uh, poses I was trying to get. So here he's shocked again, and uh, he shows concern here, and that's pretty much the end. So those are the things that I was thinking about as I'm uh, uh, building the face rig. So one of the things is uh, having a, uh, the brows come down properly. So the, the uh, there's a brow shape that pulls the brows down. It's not as uh, separated as I would normally do. Let me move this down here. But the brows uh, sort of come down as a whole 
and then the outer brow can come down a little bit more so to kind of straighten it out and then you need the ability to um, bring up the cheeks as well so this is being done with uh, joints before but just just because there's so little time just brought it up as a blend shape instead and that sort of complements the an action that pulls from the top and from the from the bottom so this is coming down this way this is coming up this way okay next for the brows you want to have a look of concern so the brow is raising up and it's actually reshaping the eye a little bit which is okay because um, this is so little capabilities with a rig it's okay to sort of cross areas just a little bit so you can pull the brows like this you can also contract the brow closer into the um, the middle so with this the right and the left next you want to get a little bit of a sneer in there so his his nose is coming up and it's just bunching that flesh a little bit above the nose right here and even though he didn't do a lot of smiling I thought he might smile just a little like slight smiles and so I included a, a smile on the one side and of course uh, mirrored on the other so for the smile the um, Smile pulls up and opens the lips a little bit, and so if you have both if you have both sides smiling, it looks like this. But most of the time, you're going to want to use it with a closed mouth smile. I figured, if at all, so um, then you want to take this uh, jaw, which this is the skin part, and close the mouth. And so then, then when you use the closed mouth, it, to make things simple, it also pulls up the middle of the the mouth, which works well. We're using both of them together, not so much with just the one side. I thought he might be grimacing a lot, so I made a shape to sort of get compression in his mouth. So that kind of looks like that. 